Does anyone else have a garment type that they end up buying lots and lots and lots of patterns of even though it's one of those things that you probably aren't going to make very many of them and you probably shouldn't make multiples of the same pattern over and over again but you can't help yourself because they're just so gorgeous? Yeah that would be coats <laughs> and outerwear for me. I have a large selection here in front of me. I wanted to go through them with you because I think I've made a fairly decent amount of these. I have a lot of plans for a lot of other ones. I did a live hangout where I went through all my coat making fabrics and tried to pair them up with the patterns I wanted to use with them. Now all I've got to do is work up the courage to try and fit these things properly and the time to make them. I was going to say it's the middle of July so talking about coats is probably not the best idea but it's actually really cold and very miserable out there so maybe it is. Anyway without further ado let's have a look at my outerwear pattern collection and see if I end up giving any of these patterns away. Probably not. I did a set of pattern collection videos back in 2016-2017. I have since changed the way that I store my patterns. I now put them into sections of garment type and then put them within the companies within that type. So I used to do them all by Vogue patterns, McCall's patterns, Butterick patterns, but I found trying to find the pattern I was looking for very difficult that way. So yeah, they're now separated into garment type. And first up we have Anoraks, of which I have two patterns, both of which I've made. So first up we have the Corset Core Patterns Kelly Anorak. I have made this and I absolutely love the one that I've made. I made it with a floofy hood, Mum quilted the lining for me with Finsulate. It is epic. I wanted the cuffed sleeves and I wanted them lined, which this pattern does not account for. This is an unlined pattern. They released a lining extension for it later on, which is okay, but it doesn't give you the option of lining a cuffed sleeve. So I made that up and it's not perfect, but I really like how it's turned out. I wear that a lot in the cooler months. The only problem for me is that because I have a long torso, I have lengthened the upper portion of it so the waist hits where it should, which I like but it's made the bottom of it very busy because of the bellows pockets that the top kind of looks a little bit naked and unbalanced if i had any of that fabric left i would probably have liked to try and go and put in some patch pockets on the upper portion of this jacket to kind of just balance it out a little bit more but i don't have any of this fabric left unfortunately so whilst i don't think it's perfect i do think it's amazing i love wearing it and i'm gonna make it again because i think it's a really Really awesome pattern it's really fun to make and as I say I wear it I love my Kelly I wear it a lot the amount of effort that mum put into quilting the inside of that thing for me as well thank you so much mum I just absolutely love that jacket we'll make more then the other one is the Soaholic Minoro this was probably the first proper coat pattern that I tackled and I did so because there is a really detailed and great sew along for this I didn't look at the instructions on this once a few other people have told me the instructions the written instructions in here are brief as I say I I never looked at them once I followed the sew along on the sewaholic blog and found that brilliant teaches you how to bag out the sleeves I use that technique a lot I love all the ones that I have made from this I've made one for myself in black and actually that's the only solid black piece that I'm keeping I wear that a lot it's got a bright emerald green silk hood and again floof around the hood because I like a floofy hood love this one I love the fact that it's fitted at the waist as well with the elastic I think that is another the reason that I absolutely love this kind of style. I made it in a much heavier weight fabric that I interlined so some of the gathering around the neckline was a little bit less fun to sew but I really really love this jacket. I've made one for my mum, I've made one for my niece and I also made one as a commission in a navy gabardine with a blonde fur hood and oh my gosh that looked amazing so I think I kind of want to do something like that for another one because I do love this jacket so yes keeping both of those patterns, love both of those patterns. Next up is trench coats and again I've made quite a few of these in fact I've made two of the three that I have. So the first one is the Victory Patterns Ulysses trench coat. The incredibly lovely Nancy sent me the kit to make the exact coat that you see here. I made it up and absolutely love it and do wear it. Not as frequently as I possibly should because this fabric creases the second you look at it. So if you're going to be sitting down in this thing it's not the 
best choice because you do end up looking a little bit disheveled, disheveled. But I really enjoyed making this. And as I say, Nancy sent me the entire kit. So thank you very much, Nancy. I would make this again in a slightly different fabric. I do think it's an absolutely gorgeous trench coat. It's very unusual. The storm flap on the back is also has the buttonholes or the belt loops in it. It's just a really interesting construction. Fully unlined. So I did deviate a little bit from the instructions by fully lining the sleeve because I prefer my sleeves to have a slippery lining so I can get them on and off over my clothes. But other than that, followed exactly along with the instructions, found them really good and love the result. Next up, we have the Dirando Lausanne trench coat, which I think is alfalfa in English. I have made one of these so far, but I am planning on making another one. I made it in a black cotton brushed twill, which is lovely. And I fully interlined it with Cobra Corsage and then did rainbow bias binding on the inside so the inside of this is amazing. I put wooden buttons on the front and I never wore it but it fits mum and she loves it. The only thing that is slightly off for mum is that the sleeves are too long on her so she kind of tucks those up and because of the little straps on the sleeves it's not an easy easy fix I don't think. There would need to be some kind of tweaking done to that to make the sleeves shortened and in proportion for mum but she still wears it. I absolutely love how it turned out and I do want one of these for myself but I want to lengthen the pattern a little bit because it wasn't quite the right length for me and I also want to fully line it because again personal preference. But interlining it was optional and it was I did it in a slippery fabric so again I could get it on and off over clothes because that is my preference. It is one of those ones where it did get very bulky in certain places and the top stitching on the inside is maybe not perfect which only I will ever see or mum. <laughs> but it's one of those things where it's like if I fully line this that would be amazing and again the beauty of sewing is that you can do whatever you want so I do want to make this again I loved how it came out I just want to do a few tweaks and I want to make it in a color that works for me but love this one and then the final one I haven't made this yet this is the trend patterns trench coat I bought this pattern because I thought it was a really good starting off point for a dupe for the Simone Rocher and I think I have that yeah I think it's Simone Rocher not Sonia Raquel it's one of the two but I think this is a really good jumping off point for that jacket. It's called a trench coat so I'm putting it in the trench coat pile. There needs to be a few tweaks to make it look like that one but I think they are doable. I've even found the perfect fabric that is the right green colour with a bit of a sheen to it. I am just holding off on making that because it is in my head so perfect that if it doesn't come out right I'll be disappointed. There's a lot of things about the Simone Rocha and this one that I am probably going to end up taking away which a lot of you might be like oh well that's the special pieces like these extra big kind of like pocket bags that sit away from the the actual finish of the of the coat I like them I just don't I think they might be too trendy for me but I like the overall shape of it and the collar and the sleeves on the Simone Rush are a bit bigger which is the thing that I would need to change on this I do have the fabric for it I do have the pattern now I just need to work up the courage to give it a try what's the worst that can happen it will be a pretty coat that is either going to work for me or not we shall see but yeah that's it for the trench coats then I have capes we got a leather cape <laughs> there was the McCall's 8029 Jedi Cape Disaster. Was it last year? I think it was last year. No, it was the year before. Wow. I rescued that and ended up turning it into a Sorrento jacket. The Sorrento is not in this haul because it's a PDF pattern. I still want to try this. I want to try and make that Zimmerman cape. I'm going to do it in the duck egg blue rather than the brown because the Zim Zimmerman did the cape in both colours and I think the duck egg blue is less likely to look Jedi. Mm, yeah, I need to make the extra small. I need to make some tweaks to this. I'm going to do it col uh, hoodless because the hood was comedy. I think I can make this work. I've, I've made the bias binding for it, which I have down here somewhere. I've got 17 meters of the bias binding. I really want to give this a go and I do owe the Patreon peeps a sew along for this. So I will try and redeem myself with this one at some point soon. I'm still looking for the correct outer fabric to make it from though, because like I say, I want a duck egg blue, which is a good color for me, but I haven't found a fabric that's not a boiled wool in that colorway yet. So if you know of one, let me know in the comments down below. And then I've got the Vogue 9288. I bought this because it was one of those ones that was like, oh, that's cool, but I probably wouldn't wear it. And then the very lovely Nancy made one and sent me a photo of herself in it. And it was just like, oh, that's a 
amazing. It was purple, I think. And it looked really, really good. So I really want to give that a try. I do have a wool cape that I do wear. So it's not like I don't wear these kind of things. It'll probably end up being View C that I give a try. I saw somebody in a tartan cape the other day that was very similar to this and it was just like, that was nice. But again, I need to not make too many outer pieces in printed fabrics or, um, you know, patterned fabrics because they just don't go with the rest of my wardrobe. They just aren't gonna be versatile enough given the type of clothes that I like to wear. Okay, so that's for the kind of like speciality coats. And then I have a coats section. All my pattern sections are split up with these little cards. They used to be white, you couldn't really see them very well. So I went through and did it in turquoise when we moved in here. Do I have a problem? Yes, yes, I do. I'm going to try and run through these a little bit quicker than I've done all that because that was a lot of waffle. First up, we have the Vogue 9040. I have made this. I made it earlier this year. I made it in black. I don't wear black, so my sister-in-law is getting this. We bought this one because it was a craftsy class. Mum wanted to make this. I made black. She made a camel-coloured version. I don't think she likes hers because the skirt's too full. I love mine, but I have lost a lot of weight since I made the muslin. I lost a lot of weight over the process of making this coat, and it's now huge on me but it will fit my sister-in-law who is much taller than I am. I think the proportions are just gonna be better on her. So she is going to get my black one. I would make this again in just a different color. I liked this. We've got Vogue 9037, which is actually the first thing that I made in this sewing room once it had been completely finished. I did it in a teal boiled wool with an iguana lining. Whilst I love it, I hate boiled wool. I realized I don't enjoy wearing it at all. I have never actually worn it. I made view C, which I really, really like. And again, this is an unlined pattern, so I decided to fully line it because of, again, personal preference. My ex bought me the wool and it's my, it's, it's, it's the X coat, <laughs> which is ridiculous. I'd made the sleeve slightly too tight because the finished garment measurements for the body of this thing were huge, so I sat downsized. Didn't even check the sleeve measurement and it was tight on my arm, so it was slightly difficult to wear over cardigans and things like that. And with the V-neck, you do need to be able to wear something underneath of it, especially with the boiled wool, because itchy. So I just never wore it. Now it fits much, much better. But every time I put it on, it's just like, this was a present from my ex. And so it's gonna go. Next we have Vogue 8346. I've not made this one yet, but I do like it. And I think I have plans in the video that I mentioned earlier, the hangout where I did the coat collection of uh, fabrics that I've got and what patterns I wanted to do with them. I do think I have plans for this one. Written them all down. Let's have a look. Because I can't remember off the top of my head. I'm good, but I'm not that good. What was it? Oh no. Oh yes. So the I've got some white clotted cream wool that I want to make one of these out of. I've got three meters of it, so it's not gonna be one of the longer ones, but hopefully it'll be view B, that sort of length. And then I've got some fruity satin lining that I got from Lanzarote that I want to line it with. There is plans for this one. Next up, we have both sizes of the Angela Clayton 8123, which is absolutely gorgeous. Now I've seen a few people make this up, but take the train off and make it a little bit more kind of like modern appropriate. I love this. Now I treated myself just after Christmas to eight and a half meters of red wool coating from Lady McElroy. Whilst this pattern does say it takes a lot of fabric, yeah, 45 inches wide, it's like nearly 12 yards, 60 inches wide, it's just over nine yards and I've got eight and a half. Because I want to shorten it and I want to take the train off because there's a giant train on this thing, I do think I want to use the red wool that I have for this coat because I think that would be amazing. And it would be in place of the black coat that I'm giving up. So it would be that kind of length. I do want to splurge and go to Spoonflower and get some of this satin lining in this print. I think that would be amazing. It's very expensive. So it's going to be something that I probably will end up doing next year rather than this year, but I'm really excited about giving this one a try. Next we have McCall's 7938. Again, this is a costume Yaya Han pattern, but I want to make this as a real everyday wearable thing. I have got plans for this one. I have five meters of a blue based tapestry style fabric, which I think think is going to work as long as I completely interface the fabric before I cut it out because it's quite a loose weave. If I don't interface it before I get it, it gets cut out I can imagine that it will disintegrate. I 
no lynn from aussie blackbeard has made one of these and she took a lot of the fullness out of the skirt but lynn is as she says herself a lot shorter than i am so she didn't want it to be overwhelming she made it in a purple wool and it's amazing i really want to give this one a try i think it would be gorgeous it's going to be view a i'm not sure what length i'm going to go for and if i do make it a bit longer which is probable i will probably take some of the fullness out of the skirt as well just so that i can get it onto the fabric that i have but yeah i have plans for this one i think it's going to be an amazing coat really looking forward to giving that a go at some point next we have mccall's 7478 this is an absolutely gorgeous pattern and you will be noticing a theme on these patterns they are very fit and flare coats that is my preference i do have the by hand london rumana coat and i've actually traced it out and i was going to use that tapestry that i've just discussed on the rumana coat and it is a beautiful coat and i think it's absolutely amazing i don't think it's for me it might be more mum though because it doesn't have the big giant skirt that I love that she feels overwhelms her so I'll have to show her that pattern and see what she thinks. As I say I have traced it out and I traced it out a while ago so it might now be a size that might work for mum so although I have lengthened it in the body so we'll yeah we'll have to have a look and see if mum likes that pattern for a start and then how the measurements work out for her for the pattern that I've traced. Back to this one I don't actually have any plans for old fabric in my stash for this one it's it is gorgeous though i would probably do view a with a slightly smaller collar i think it's lovely yeah at some point this will get made so it's staying next we have the mccall's 6800 i have made this one up and i actually have it down here because this was one of my very first thrift flips it's not technically a thrift flip because my sister-in-law gave me her green velvet curtains from the house when she moved in but yeah it's my first time properly tailoring a coat and i'm incredibly pleased with how this came out although i made the shorter size because this is velvet i had two curtains which were very sun damaged i was worried that i wouldn't have enough fabric to do a longer coat because this is very full in the skirt i never wear this because it's so short which is why i'm saying i might lengthen some of these other coats i do have some of this velvet left and i've got this coat down here because i'm going to take it apart i love the lining but i don't think it's the right green this is too green a green and this is too yellow i don't think they work together i went for pink flat piping as well which i'm not loving so what i want to do is take the lining out take the facing off I made the facing for this coat myself because I prefer that finish on a circle skirt like this. I didn't make it deep enough. It, it's okay, but it's not great. So yeah, I'm gonna take this one apart and I am going to lengthen it. Now there's gonna be obviously seam lines along the bottom where I lengthen it, but I'm gonna buy some trim and it's probably gonna be this black leafy trim and I'm gonna sew that on and bead it. And then I'm also going to add small pieces on the lapel and round the bottom of the arms to kind of make this into more of an evening coat. Because I mean, it's a velvet coat, to be fair, I'm probably gonna wear this day to day when it's longer because it's amazing. Now, I don't think, as I say, I've got enough of this exact velvet to add those pieces onto the bottom. So I'm going to get something like a brown, a deep rich brown or maybe a gold. I'm going to get a complementary velvet fabric probably from Textile Express. I'm going to use that to add on to the bottom of this which is another reason that I want to put like the line of trim and bead around the trim because I think that will help tie everything together. I'm really excited about this project. It's going to be a refashion project so I'm going to do a whole video on it. I did do a kind of like series on this. It was Vlogmas one year a couple of years ago of sewing this up and I did film the whole process and I was going to put a video specific video out for it but because I put so much in vlogmas it seemed repetitive but I will do a let's remake this coat because it's gorgeous and deserves to be worn video very very soon. I have made the 6800, will make it again. It is another possible candidate for the red wool if I don't go for the Angela Clayton pattern. Next up we have a couple of very very kind of like on trend themed pirate type coats for my pirate core fantasies. First is Simplicity 8769. I think this one is absolutely gorgeous. I don't know if I would ever 
wear it out. Maybe if it was made in the right fabric combinations, probably. I think it's beautiful. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. Really want to give that one a try. And I've also got Simplicity 9086. I've got it in both size bundles. Again, this was part of my KB pattern swap with Heather. Again, very pirate core, pirate-esque. I love both versions, although I'm not too keen on the visible zip that is on the one that's made up on the envelope. I would probably do a different type of closure, but I do like the high-low hem. I know dad hates them. I like the pop of red that they've done in there. So apart from the closure method that's at the front of that one, I very much like the one that they've made, except that I don't wear black, but we know this, so I would do it in slightly different colors. But yeah, I think that one's gorgeous. Then we have Butterick 6868. This is a coat and a dress pattern. I really didn't need to buy this one. I saw it, loved it. I have so many that are similar. I really like the cuff detail and the collar detail that they've done in velvet on the model that they've made up. I like that it's such a low front. I think that's really, really nice. I have so many of this style of coat that I really didn't need to buy this one. Am I going to get rid of it? No, I'm not. But it might not survive the next curl because of all these other patterns that I've got that I'm really excited about making, you know. And the dress is nice, but the dress is probably not very me either. So I might keep it for the cuff details because I do really like the cuff details. If the cuff details of some of the other ones that I've got don't work on some of the other jackets that I'm planning, I might steal these ones, but I didn't need to buy that pattern. We have the Charm Patterns Princess Coat. I've made it twice. I have plans to make more. I love this thing. I don't wear my mermaid underwater rainbow coat very often because it is incredibly warm. Lined it with silk, it's interlined with cotton flannel and then polyester coating on the outside. But it is immense. I love that thing and I was so so proud of it. It was the first one that I made. Then I went on to make the trench coat. Really 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 love this. She's also released, if you're a patron, there's a hood so you can make a raincoat and then she's tweaked it to make it into a dressing gown as well. Yeah. I definitely want to make more of these. I love this one and I do wear my green one frequently. I'd wear my underwater one more if it wasn't quite so hot but it is absolutely like heat inducing so love this one. Then we've got the Pauline Alice Hemispheric Coat. I'm halfway through this. I started the beginning of this year by tracing it out, doing the alterations that I needed to do, cutting it out of muslin, making a muslin of it. Really like the muslin, do need to take it in at the waist, at the back, because it is just big on me and mum pointed it out and it's she's very correct because if I make it up as is it's probably not going to get worn as often as it deserves to because it's not as fitted as it, I would like it to be. Again, personal preference. I'm not going to overfit it. I'm going to fit it enough so that it works for me. I'm going to make it making this out of a navy wool with a matching little capelet that goes over the top with faux fur. It's going to look really really cool. So yeah, I hemispheric coat have been banging on about making this for ages. Love this one and we'll get it done by the end of the year. We have the Vogue 1669. This thing is amazing. Elizabeth gave this to me as part of a KB pattern swap. I have a bottle green wool fabric from Lady McElroy and and then I also have a rayon twill lining with birds all over it for the lining for this thing. I have got it in my basket of patterns that I want to make soon. The only reason I haven't gotten to it is because I'm kind of doing red and navy this year. It's kind of like an, I mean, I, I've kind of deviated that massively the last month because I did fruit instead. But yeah, I'm kind of doing lots of the navy and red fabrics that I have this year. I know which fabric this is going to be. It is absolutely gorgeous. I love the ones that I've seen other people make. I think it's really interesting style lines. Love the pockets. It's going to be really fun to make. So that's going back into my basket of to be made soon. And as I say, I have all the fabrics ready for this one. Vogue 1752. This one is really gorgeous it is asymmetric and I don't usually like asymmetric patterns but I loved the cuffs on this I loved the oversized pocket flaps I love the back detail of this one I think it's amazing again it's another candidate for possibly the red wool fabric that I've got if I did it in that then I would have enough red wool fabric left to make a smaller cropped jacket possibly 
yeah I kind of like the idea of having a couple of versions of a red coat jacket in my collection because it's a colour that's really good for me the wool that I've bought is a really good colour for me so if I don't do the Angela Clayton over the top giant coat with the eight and a half meters possibly this one possibly I think this is gorgeous I really like it very glad that I bought this one and then the final one this is a really long video sorry but yeah the final one that I have is a cosplay pattern by McCall's it's called Eventide Pirate Core ultimate like this is the third pirate core kind of pattern that I have now it would be this kind of blue version that I would make rather than the purple version that I'm gonna they've got on the back here and hopefully I'll be able to put up some pictures for you guys as well I am not a hundred percent sure about the poofy stuffed collar that's the only thing I'm not sure about with this one other than that I love everything about it high low hem cuffed sleeves the front detail the front closure detail I think it's gorgeous and I could have a lot of fun with some of the fancier brocade fabrics I have in my stash again this might just be a fantasy piece that I make to in indulge my inner like magpie this would be a really good candidate for possibly something like the David Bowie labyrinth ballroom scene coat whilst it's not obviously screen accurate in any way shape or form I think if you kind of made it in the right colours and jeweled it and you know styled it in the right way you'd get across what you were wanting to do. I really love his jacket in that but the collar on his as well is very very high which I would hate. It's a tail coat which again I don't know how often I mean how often would I wear this one but how often would I wear that one. I, do you know what I mean it's one of those things it's like this reminds me of that but this is more wearable for my preferences so possibly cost possibly something like that would be pretty cool. I can see myself maybe doing it in a silk dupioni if you've interlined that and interfaced it well. A dress coat especially for maybe over the butterfly gown that I want to do could be amazing. Yeah love this. Don't know when I'm gonna make it. I'm very much debating doing some fantasy projects just for the sake of it rather than because I have anywhere to wear them because I really want to indulge and I really do have a wardrobe full of clothes that I can wear on the daily so it's not like I need to fill gaps in my wardrobe so that I have stuff to wear so fantasy projects could be a lot of fun to indulge in. You'll have to let me know what you think in the comments down below. So that is a large collection. I have gotten rid of none of those pieces. There was one that I, that Butterick one that I was, yeah this Butterick one that I possibly could but I do like the cuffs on it so I'm gonna keep that for just that piece maybe I don't know what do you think do you think I'm mad <laughs> I mean we know I'm mad but do you think I'm utterly mad for keeping that many of these coat patterns these outerwear patterns which one are you looking forward to seeing me make which one of the ones that I've made did you like the most I think it's my princess coats especially the rainbow one even though I don't wear that one very often I think that's one of my proudest things I've ever made the um, refashion is that green velvet one I think once it's long enough I'll wear that a lot even if it's beaded and jeweled I think that probably will just be one of those things where I'm like excellent it's even blingier than it started life out as I love coat making I am not ruling out buying more coat patterns because they keep releasing new ones that are just as fabulous and I'm like oh, I need that I want that I should have that <laughs> I think I have a raincoat from La Forme. I was talking about the jackets that they do, but I also think I have, I do have this raincoat pattern from La Forme as well, which I really want to give a try in something shiny and iridescent. I think that would be amazing. I saw Bianca's Ver uh, Verity, Verdigree, yeah, Verdigree book, uh, lookbook, and she had like a tealy coloured 80s style jacket from London Fog, and it was just like, ooh, that reminds me of this pattern. Yeah, and now I'm tempted. So I don't think I'm ever going to stop buying coat patterns because I find them fascinating and they are such rewarding projects to do. I just don't need this many, but then we can say that a lot about a lot of the things that I have in my life. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed having a look at my pattern collection and the plans that I have for them. I'm really excited about so many of these and I do very much enjoy making coats so I can see me making more and more plans and buying more and more patterns in the future. Uh, yeah, we all, we all know I have issues, right? <laughs> if you've enjoyed this video, you might want to check out my other pattern collection videos here.